Hello everyone, uh, I'm Irvan Zorian. I'm the chairman of AGBU uh, Silicon Valley. I'd like to welcome you all to this very special session of the Armenia Virtual Bridge, uh, the accelerator program of the bridge. This, this bridge program uh, and its accelerator was organized by the AGBU Silicon Valley in conjunction with the Ministry of High-Tech Industry of Armenia. Uh, this particular accelerator program included 15 startups from Armenia uh, who, who got uh, the education program as well as the, the moderators. And uh, during the past four months, we were very active in, in running the entire program together. Mm -hmm. uh, that program was uh, provided with the Armenian Virtual College as an online platform because the teams were not able to come to, to the Silicon Valley. That, that's why we did it in an online manner but it was quite effective. We'll see the results today. So today is the demo day, is a special day for all of us. It's an important milestone in the accelerator. At this demo day, we are very thankful that uh, the investment community is well represented among us uh, from Silicon Valley and, and internationally as well. I'll go through the names briefly. Um, before that, I'd like to mention that we also have with us uh, the mentors of this program. We had five mentors of the program. Let me acknowledge some of our, our, our uh, uh, presence. Uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Deputy Minister of High-Tech Industry with us, who will uh, take a, um, a few, will give few words at the end of the session. Uh, we have with us uh, the moderators, Gary Jinks, Michelle Messina, James Wetzel, Shekhar Do, as well as Mariam Hamparcia, okay? Um, we have with us as well the, the, the CEOs, the founders of the companies. We'll be calling them alphabetically to make their presentations alphabetically uh, of their companies. Let me just mention the company names for now. It's the Pritzuk, Chessify, Coinstats, Early One, Easy DMARC, Embry Tech, Eswap, Expert Technologies, Forge Fiction, GapCert, Lucky Carrot, Paiva, Retention Force, and URA, okay? Uh, we'll, we'll go with this order. Um, each one of them will have three minutes for a presentation and additional minutes to answer the questions of the investors, okay? I'll also invite the investors to be interactive with their questions in case uh, they have questions during the presentation. It is okay to stop them and ask questions. It's an informal session that we can do interactivity as much as we want. So I'm very, very thankful to have the investment community very well represented today. So today we have among us uh, from NATO Ventures, Lin Wan and Mac Jiang. We have from Garage Ventures, Henry Wong. We have from U First Capital, Sanjeet Singh Dang. And from Bitsy Ventures, Martin Tantau. From Band of Angels, Ron Wiseman. From Sand Hills Angels, Frank Wilsman. From GA Partners, Armen Verdian from France. Uh, the Connecting Architects, John Chilingirian and Victoria Bitovsky. We have also angel investors among us as well. Andre Gucek, uh, Benson Jung, John Lachiopi, Michel Tsing, Mohamed Fidarus, as well as Zarik Magertian. Okay, I'm very sorry if I misspelled many names. Uh, you excuse me. Uh, we also have several additional investors who came as guests today. We, I, we didn't have in advance their names. I'll welcome them as well in case uh, they want to, to just give their names, introduce themselves briefly and their organization. That will be excellent. Otherwise, it's, it's fine. Anyone who wants to introduce himself or herself, the ones that I didn't mention? Oh, I would like to introduce uh, Bruno from TV LP Institute. Um, Bruno, would you like to introduce yourself and your organization? Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Bruno from the TV LP Institute. Uh, we have acceleration programs uh, in the Silicon Valley for uh, international founders uh, coming from, uh, you know, from more than 42 countries. So we are very glad to be also here and to learn about uh, startups from Armenia. Thanks for being with me. Thanks a lot. With that, uh, I would like to start by, by inviting the first company to share the screen and give us uh, their presentation. And that will be Agatha from 
Agata, you're with us. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, I am you're the welcome. first one. Sure. Uh, so now I'll share my screen. Just to uh, one, one comment, uh, yes, yeah. we'll keep the Q&A to a maximum of two to three minutes in between. Uh, so for, for each of the teams, feel free to interrupt as they're pitching and ask a question if you'd like, or wait at the end. Thank yes. you. Okay, so can I start? Yes, please. Hi, my name is Agata. I'm an illustrator and co-founder of Zook. Zook is an AI technology that converts simple photos into a stylish illustrated portrait. I have been working as an illustrator for 15 years and can you please draw me is the question that I was asked every single day. I realized that people love to see an artist to draw their portraits and we've seen an opportunity in all of this. First of all, people love to see artistic version of themselves as they are ready to pay for it. And also artistic ops have very large revenue potential now. So we have created a technology that converts photos into illustrations and videos into animations. And based on that tech, we have released applications where users can super easily upload their photos and videos and, get, and receive animations and artistic portraits like this. And also it's a security friendly way to express yourself online. So we have released our app and so that many people love it and use it, but we also understood that our target audience are people who need to content every day. And it is TikTok, Snapchat, and Instagram generation. We explored the market and saw that people love to spend a lot of money on creativity applications and only in May they spent $220 million on photo and video apps. So a little bit about our technology. We've got an AI breakthrough and our team can generate new AI models in five days. Here in the left, you can see handmade drawing of artists in our team and in the right, AI creations. And this is my favorite slide. I'm showing it to many people and 75% of them couldn't find any difference between handmade art and AI art. Currently, we are working on animation features and users can upload their videos and receive animations based on that short videos. And now we are working on live video feature, which we are doing with Snapchat partnering. We're partnering with Snap and using their real-time Snapchat lens. And should, soon we will release also this feature with cross-promotion with Snapchat. This is our traction so far. Actually, we have generated 400K portraits in 143 countries. We have 13K monthly active users, and we have spent zero dollars on marketing, but we received some international media coverage, and we have 15 API and SDK requests. We have competitors, of course, but unlike them, we can very quickly create art styles, and we have animated features right now. So the business model is subscription-based, so people can unlock uh, many different art styles with the subscriptions, and we are testing API and SDK market. For all of this, we are seeking for 300K for upcoming 18 months, and we will be happy if you can join us in this journey. And this is our team. We are professionals in art and design, technology, and marketing. We have been working together for a very long time in different proje projects, and we have very experienced advisors in our team. Thank you very much. And I will be happy to answer your questions. Yes, perfect. Thanks a lot, Agata. Thank uh, you for having me. Hi, Agata. Yes. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, this is Sanjeet from uh, U First Capital. I'm based in Silicon Valley. Thank you to, to my brother uh, Henry uh, for inviting me here. Thank you, uh, everybody, as well. Appreciate it. Um, I, I like what you are building, uh, Agata. Um, the challenge uh, becomes is how do you scale these platforms? So are you looking at any potential partnerships? You mentioned Snapchat, uh, but you are only using their lens, I assume, right? It's not deeper partnership than that. Uh, yes, actually, we are just starting partnering with them. We are working with their AI and ML team right now to improve this feature. And uh, yes, we are just negotiating together what we can do in further. So we'll see how it will go. We are negotiating with them right now. Yeah, I use, your pitch reminded me of a company called Prisma. I don't know if you know Prisma. Yeah, AI, of course. You know, okay, okay. 
Okay. Yeah, they pay with their and stuff, but I used to love that app. Uh, I think this was three plus years ago um, as yeah. well. I would like to follow up uh, to see. And where are you based? Are you in Armenia? Yes, we are in Armenia. Do you have a team outside Armenia also or not? Uh, no, uh, one of our team members is in Canada, but the others are in Armenia. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. If you go to the team slide, I think you went a little fast. Yeah. I fast for me. Okay. So four full-time people. Is that correct? Yes. All of us are full-time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Let's you. Follow up. Thank you for your questions. Just one quick question. Uh, yes. Can you talk about revenues. Sorry. Could you speak about your revenues? You had great traction, but are you turning that into money? Uh, we are not generating revenue now because we didn't implement in the subscription model yet. So we don't have revenue with the applications, but as we have started as a gifting company, we generated revenue when we were just selling handmade portraits. What are your, what's your forecast uh, for 2022? Uh, we have generated about, uh, it was a tough year, of course, because of the COVID and um, the war, but we have generated about 25K, but it was handmade drawings, not the application. So this is why we have created an app to scale the market. So for next year, for 2022, post-COVID, what do you think your revenues could be? Ah, okay. Uh, we are planning to have 30 MMR, 30K MMR. Thank you. I, okay, what's the what's the turnaround time in terms of creation uh, or the uh, artistic portraits yes uh, it's seconds okay less than a second hi um, this is Michelle I, I have a question and I'm an artist myself so um, and I, I make AR that's for fun yeah. and my question is and I'm familiar with actually how you generate these things. So my question is, how are you planning to um, um, to get users? Like for the first year? Uh, the first we are going to have a marketing. We have uh, tested some marketing ways and we understood that the best way for us is influencer marketing. So the, the main way we are going to get users is influencer marketing. With okay. influencer manager manage, uh, marketing, what what is your what will what will the incentives that you will provide to the influencer? And have you tested it yet? Yes, we have tested, and we have uh, a collaboration with uh, small influencer um, influencers in TikTok, and uh, they have just uh, recorded a video and. Uh, the followers of that influencer just saw it and a big traffic just came and download application. So okay, this was cool. what we tested. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank okay. You th th thanks a lot, Agatha. Th thanks uh, for the good questions. Mariam, can you introduce the next speaker for us? Yes. Uh, up next, we have a really hot topic these days, chess. I would love to welcome Goran Vartanian from Chessify. Hello. Let me share my screen. Can you see it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hello, I am Gore from Chessify. I'm CEO of Chessify. Uh, we we created uh, we created startup uh, and want to justify the world. Five years ago, we found out that uh, there is a lack of digital tools in the chess world, and the chess training itself is time consuming, and the chess remains in the 20th century in terms of technology. So we bring the fourth technological revolution to the chess world. We provide chessboard scanner, the fastest analytical tools in the market currently available, AI personal trainer, and many more other digital tools. So this is our product that uh, we created. 
our products are already in the market and used by many hundred thousands of chess lovers and hundreds of chess professionals. So this is, you see how it works in real life. So you can, so we, this is start, we, we started with this unique feature and you can only find it in, in our chess, uh, in our application. We have uh, more than 600,000 downloads and with 10% of uh, active users from that and 30% of one week retention. Also 100, 100, more than 100 grand masters use our platform for their trainings. Uh, we have, uh, this is our traction for active users for the last four months we have uh, more than 40% average growth with only 65% for this month, I mean, June, June, July. Last summer, we monetized our product uh, and uh, these are the numbers spent per customer for Android, iOS, and pro for professional market as well. So our monthly uh, financial growth is 20%. The market opportunity is, uh, according to the FIDE statistics, there are more than hundred, more than half million people worldwide play, play chess, and hundred million from them uh, play online. Of course, we have great competitors, but our position in the market is promising. The community really like our product. Uh, we have a good UX for for the chess lovers, and we are. Uh, we are considered as a technological startup. And uh, in our platform, you can find like digital tools for with uh, computer visual technology, AI engine, professional tools for grandmasters and masters, and some socialization also stuff. And uh, our sponsor chess team became a world champion uh, in the first world online championship in San Francisco, and we are very happy with that. So thank you. And these are my contacts and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, what's the market size? Uh, market size, targetable market size, we estimated about 3 billion uh, for us. And I, I, I will send, so, uh, I will send detailed uh, competition if you want. Uh -huh. Hi, this is Ezra from the new dude. So how what's your plan? What's your strategy to uh for to retain your customers after the heat of the Queen's Gabbit? What, what is the the customer retention? What's your strategy oh, on that? After the, the, the Queen's Cabinet, after the, the, the heat of the Queen's Cabinet, what's your strategy on retaining your customers? Oh, it's, it's always uh, from 25 to 35%. So just now it's 30%, like this month. So it's, uh, it depends. So our lowest uh, retention was 25. The community really liked our product. Even after monetization, because like uh, first three years, we, we just had free version of the application and we developed different tools for, them, for the community. And from the summer, we started like monetization, but still community really like, like our products. Hi, this is Sanjeet uh, from U First Capital. Um, I, you know, there are a lot of uh, solutions out there, like you showed in the comparative slide deck, all slide also. There are a lot of uh, solutions out there. Yeah, um, I'm wondering about your differentiation and how you plan to position long term. You know, you can get early revenue. I believe that, but yeah. long term it becomes difficult to compete. I, I yeah. feel. Yeah, for, for example, this, uh, this uh, feature that we have, you cannot find in any other competitors stuff. We have video search based on the position. You can put any chess position and search in YouTube videos for a given position with the seconds. Like uh, it will say in this video, you can find in 
10 minutes, 22 seconds, this position. And people can search for their trainings. We currently also, also do partnership with chess lectures, which provide a huge number of videos. And we search positions inside the videos. You know, it's like searching face inside the YouTube, YouTube like videos. The similar is here, the details people want to really find solution, not only solution, but also explanation of the positions. But uh, it's very difficult to find the given position inside a, like uh, hundreds of millions chess uh, videos. So, for example, that one also is very unique and only you can find in our platform. So we have specific like unique proposition for our product. Uh, we provide the best cloud analysis. I, I, I didn't put here, but more than 10 people from top 10, top 100 uh, grandmasters that you know worldwide uh, train with uh, chess supply. I just cannot um, say the names, but like the more than 2,700 2, uh, rating people train with chess supply. Okay, thank you very so much. We, we have yeah. Okay. Thanks. Perfect. Very, very good. Lots of good questions. And let's move on to the next company, which will be CoinStats. So Narek will be presenting on behalf of CoinStats. Narek. Um, hi. Thank you, Yervan. Hi, everyone. Uh, okay. I'm just sharing the screen. And uh, to the investors, uh, if I could just jump in, uh, if you have any comments or, or questions that you don't get to ask, please feel free to uh, enter it in the chat directly. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. And you also have the full contacts of, of, of the companies from the briefing that you have received. So you are free, free of course, to, to communicate with them afterwards as well. Yes. Can you send me again? Maybe I missed that briefing. You can do that, yes, of course. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll start. I'm, I'm Narek, I'm the founder and uh, CEO of CoinStats, and we are uh, building CoinStats to participate in the decentralization of the world finances by creating an interface to crypto. Uh, if you're familiar with the crypto world nowadays, it's very diversified and decentralized. Not only the, the vision and the overall finance system is decentralized, but also the way how people use different crypto and blockchain products and how people invest in, in crypto is de decentralized. Uh, average investor uses more than five different exchange wallet and different other platforms. They diversify their investments. They invest more than 30 different cryptocurrencies, coins, Obviously, there are so many uh, new opportunities to invest in. There are so many new exchanges and wallets and a new product uh, pops out every day. The ecosystem grows uh, very, very fast. Uh, and obviously, it's very high volatile being, being so new and early. Uh, so the, the problem we have seen almost three years ago, which, which became even bigger problem, problem now, is that managing your investments are hard. Accessing some investment opportunities are also hard and sophisticated. Accessing decentralized apps or dApps is not easy. People have to spend time to understand how things work, etc. It takes hours, if not days. Uh, and yeah, people get lost in their holdings. Imagine having like uh, 10 different accounts and having 30 different coins in, on each of those accounts, you'll be, you'll be lost. Uh, obviously for, for solving those, those problems, people, uh, a lot of people are using spreadsheets, manually entering what they bought, what they're using, what they loaned, etc. In, in very sophisticated, big, hard to use spreadsheets. There are a lot of manual portfolio, so-called manual portfolio trackers, where people just uh, rather than spreadsheets, manually enter uh, their, their trades or transactions or transfers into those platforms. And obviously to, to solve the problem of things being hard to use, people spend time to learn how to use the new uh, things. In, in fact, me personally, I spend hours on, on figuring out how each new product works. Uh, it's, it's, it's very complicated being, being so new. 
So to solve all of those, those problems, we have founded Coinstat almost three years ago. Uh, the, the problem three years ago was just, just managing your investment on manually entering your data, but now it's much bigger. Coinstat uh, tries to become a front end of all your holdings, trades, profit losses, investment strategies, all the uh, financial decentralized apps you're accessing, be that decentralized exchange or a decentralized lending platform. And people just, just uh, use whatever platform they want to use but doing that easier and doing uh, that through one, one interface. Uh, just, just talking a bit, the market opportunity, et cetera. Uh, there, there are some estimates, there are only 50 million people in, in crypto, active crypto users as of today. And it's, it's estimated but that it will, it will reach at least 250 million by 2023. I also put a chart of uh, total value looked locked at the DeFi decentralized finance. You can see during last year it reached almost twenty five billion dollars, and obviously it has significant potential for growth at least ten x. Uh, talking about our team, we found we are all already working three years together now. We are almost twenty full time employees, uh, and also using this funding round to higher for uh, almost four or five additional key positions to be ready for our next uh, growth uh, stage. Uh, talking about business model, we have more than five different revenue channels. First one is subscriptions. People pay for pro features or premium features, pay per monthly, per monthly or per, per year basis. Uh, we also do and do plan to increase uh, generating significant revenue from, from trading. So people trade through coins that it's much easier. And obviously we will charge fees. We are already uh, making significant revenue on advertisement and affiliate deals. And we have a lot of data which could potentially be become uh, revenue by correctly analyzing it. Uh, a little bit of our traction. We are running at almost 600,000 monthly active users across all our platforms, iOS, Android, and web, and a few smaller platforms. Uh, all of our users currently have $50 billion tracked in their portfolios on Coinstats app. We have 15,000 paying customers. Uh, average, our Average user has almost $60,000 worth of investments. We have more than 100,000 connected exchanges, more than 100,000 connected wallets, and most of our users are from tier one. In terms of competitors, the, the market is, is very overloaded. There are so many different products, again, popping up every day. Uh, I just uh, put the, the biggest competitors here, which are Blockfolio and Delta, and uh, yeah, basically we have the best plan for your future. We have the best vision, especially both of those competitors right now being acquired by by their bigger uh, by bigger companies. Blockfolio have been acquired for 150 million dollars about uh, a year ago, and they are only like up to three times bigger, but than us by active active users. A roadmap for 2021, we would do in-app trading, we would do trading desk. And after, after doing all those trading features, we would focus on index funds and social trading, which are also uh, could, could work very well. If we have trading, we should have social trading because we have so many users having their portfolios. Uh, and the plan for 2021 to open the trading monetization channel uh, and by 2022, we also want to monetize our data. So we are raising a very small bridge round right now up to around 500,000 to reach our short term trading goals to hire for those key positions and uh, continue stay focused on products product for the next three to six months. Uh, we are raising safe nodes. We are legally based in Singapore, but most of the team currently is in Armenia. Uh, thank you. Happy to, to answer your questions.
What's the exit strategy? So that's, uh, uh, there, there are two exit strategies. First of all, uh, the, the vision we have is a billion dollar vision. We can, we can get into the IPO uh, unless we get acquired by a bigger uh, competitor for multiple hundred millions. So bigger competitor, I mean bigger company. There, there are some, the, 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 there are at least a dozen of billion, uh, already billion dollar crypto companies right now, Coinbase and Gemini and Kraken are doing IPO, I think this year at, uh, at huge valuation. And obviously, if we succeed and the overall crypto decentralized ecosystem succeeds with the goal of decentralizing finance world, at least, and not only, obviously, exit strategy could be uh, m a to, to some, you know, someone like Fidelity or any other big finance uh, company worldwide, which is uh, who, who would like to get into, into the sphere because of it's, it's growing and we, we are seeing it's growing. We are seeing the locked value in DeFi. If we, if we had more time, I would introduce more uh, why we are so excited about decentralized finance and overall decentralized ecosystem because it's had so many, it has so many advantages against uh, bigger banks, uh, against regular banks, so not bigger. They tend to have 60K US in crypto, but how much of that is in concentrated and how many cryptos does the average customer who has that 60K portfolio hold? Uh, so from, from our data, it's average is uh, 30. They and hold. how concentrated is that 60K in a Bitcoin versus some of the other coins? We also have the data. It's even available on our website if you buy a pro, but I'll, I'll tell you for free. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically the numbers are very similar to overall market cap dominance of Bitcoin or Ethereum, etc. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very close. 50% is Ethereum, 20, 20 is, uh, sorry, 50% is Bitcoin, 20 ish is Ethereum. So, so people tend to keep higher uh, holdings in less uh, riskier investments. But yeah, obviously that, that's average. There are, we, we call them power users who have more than 30 different connected exchanges and wallets and platforms into CoinStats. Those users, uh, a lot of those users are tend to buy especially new uh, coins in, especially in DeFi ecosystem and yeah, which have higher reward rate with the higher risk. I mean, we, we, are, we are seeing coins going 10X in, in a week or so, and that's not really because of a bubble thing. It's because of fundamentals and because of the these numbers, uh, the DeFi ecosystem grows. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Nadek. If there are additional questions for Nadek, I would love for, for the investors to pitch in and the chat. Uh, let's, in the, you know, for the sake of time, move on to Gevork Safarian from early one. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I will share my screen. Great, let's start. Um, I'm CEO of early one and First of all, I would like to ask you, um, who likes waiting in lines? As let's be honest, lines are a problem for people. And lines are also one of the biggest customer churn factors. And we created a software solution for that. Our solution is customer flow distribution in a way to eliminate waiting and wasting time in lines. And our solution does remote ticketing through our mobile application using its unique estimation logic, allowing people to get served at their preferred time without waiting. How it works? Users select the company where they want to get served. They select desired time and our system makes an estimation based on the branches current load 
and available resources in place and suggest the nearest available time when these customers can get served without waiting. Our software also gives businesses the chance to listen to their customers and consistently measure satisfaction rates through our feedback solution. Early one is designed in a way that allows full monitoring of branch operations. So businesses have clear vision of their service process, idle time of service agents and service quality. And with help of our reporting and BI tools, they improve their service processes. Of course, we know our competitors and we have already replaced 13 other flow management solutions. Our most prominent competitive advantage is our mobile application with its unique time estimation algorithm. Our software allows monitoring and control of staff during the entire process of service. And we have deployed our solution in six countries already. Currently, we have US Embassy to Armenia, more than 20 banks, telecom and governmental organizations. Also, we have special solution for healthcare. Our current growth model has been to expand through our partnership program, and we plan to expand it. Meanwhile, our sales and marketing plan is to increase our inbound efforts through digital communication channels. We have a wonderful team. They all drive our business growth, making sure we have retention rate at an impressive 94%. Our team grew 30% last year, and we rolled out three products within the past two years. Thank you. Join us in our journey of changing people's lives. Get us. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name mentioned that will be JavaCert. Something changed or not? Yes, go ahead, please, get us. Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. Cyber criminals send about 200 billion. Phishing or fake sorry, emails. Sorry, can you go full screen, please? Sorry. Yes, thanks. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Cyber criminals send about 200 billion fake emails, phishing emails every day. And a small part of it, business email compromise attack, which uh, only in 2020 taken about uh, $12 billion from uh, organizations and it is increasing year over year about uh, more than 10 times. Business email compromise attack also the main attack vector and can cause the data breaches. By Verizon data breach investigation report, 93% uh, successful attacks worldwide started from phishing or were phishing. So the email security is important to prevent organizations from money loss, customer loss, data loss, uh, protect their intellectual property, and they needed to meet regulatory compliances like PCI DSS or HIPAA. There are industry standards that can solve this problem, but it requires uh, expert knowledge, it is time consuming, and it is risky, especially for enterprises. That's why we built EasyDMark, cybersecurity software as a solution, which can minimize the probability of data leakage and financial loss for businesses. It also can increase the domain and brand reputation. Integration with EasyDMark is very easy. It can take up to five minutes. You need to just add domain and follow instructions. EasyDMark, the only all-in-one solution in the market, we have AI-powered data classification and visualization and smart alerts and suggestions, which are very unique in the market and can fastly identify threats and suggest the solutions uh, to prevent organizations from money and data loss. We have more than 10,000 registered domains in our platform 
and industry leaders like Equinix, Tel Aviv Stock Exchange, Ferrari, Toyota, trust us. We are number one by customer feedbacks in G2 Crowd platform. Our main distribution channel is partnership. We have all powerful tools and models to integrate with partners and deliver solution to end businesses and customers. We uh, maintain our own reputation database, uh, already have more than uh, 5 uh, million uh, addresses in our reputation database. We analyze 2 billion data points per month. We deliver suggestion notification, more than 1,000 uh, email service providers uh, in the world. And uh, we are looking for partners to scale our business in Europe and US. I'm ready for your questions. Thanks, Geras. And any questions for Geras? Yeah, Garas, I've got a question for you. I see what you're doing and, and so forth. Can you tell me how, what is it you're doing with the email? Is there a special method that you're using to go and pull this data? What, what are you, how are you doing it? We always stay outside of the organization. We don't read emails. The direct email traffic don't flow through easy mark. We receive uh, reports from email service providers. And by analyzing that reports, we deliver uh, these reports about statuses of emails. Each email service provider uh, uh, sending reports when they receive email. And uh, we deliver these suggestions, alert, configurations, instructions uh, on top of these reports. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Geras. Um, I'd love to introduce our next team, Sadkis from Embrytech, and also make a quick announcement regarding the pace. Um, to be mindful of everyone's time, it looks like questions are, are taking a lot longer than we expected. We're going to limit to one question. So if you if you have a question, please jump in. Uh, and and you know you have access to these uh, founders and their contact information. Please feel free to reach out to them and, and continue the conversation. Thanks so much, Sadkis. Go for it. Hello, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Hey, I'm Sarkis, the CEO and co-founder at Embrytech. There are 1.9 billion overweight people in the world. People spend $245 billion annually on weight loss. However, 70% of people who lose weight within one, two years regain more weight than they had lost. We discovered why, why people regain weight. First, they lose the consistency in weighing and recording during and even after the weight loss. The challenges are many in keeping the accountability, finding the time, doing it every day, you name it. Second, weight regain happens slowly and unnoticed. To stop these yo-yo cycles, we invented Embry, a patent pending smart insole that uh, a patent pending smart insole that measures body weight fluctuations without a scale. Embry gives you the visible results you need with the invisible tracking of activities and behavioral analysis you need. Just slide it into your shoe, pair it with your phone, and let Embry take care of the rest. We have 100 pairs in production right now. We have set up uh, supply chain and batch production already. We have cutting it out, edge algorithms, cloud-based backend and our iOS applications already. We launched a, uh, recently we launched a campaign and without spending a penny on, on ads, in just a couple of days, 20 people pre-ordered paying $150 each to become one of the hundred first, first 100 Embry community members and received their insoles in April. Um, my co-founder and I have been working together in design and engineering for the last 10 years. Our third co-founder is a nutritionist with 15 years of experience. 
Lastly, we convinced our founding advisor to join us as the CTO, who has eight plus years of experience in leading tech teams, designing wearables and biomedical devices. Our advisory board consists of uh, successful entrepreneurs, a patent attorney and researchers. Together, we do believe that in 10 years, we can turn the shoe into a predictive health tool. To reach that vision, we already raised half a million from uh, grants in grants and investments from smart Hit VC, high ventures, index ventures and other angels. Next, we'll be raising 3.4 million to reach a product market fit. Now we are looking for uh, angel. Uh, we are looking for a lead investor for, for this round. Now imagine the future. Like every smartphone has a built-in camera. Now every shoe will have built-in embryo. Thank you. Happy to answer your questions if you have so. Yes, I guess this is Sanjeet. Uh, great, great pitch and a solution much needed in the market, I think. But uh, it's hard to enforce people to actually use these products at home unless a doctor prescribes it um, or somebody is in severe pain, maybe. Any thoughts on that? We're selling on, uh, on our website uh, for, to collect the first early adopters to, to receive the feedback. Yeah, I would like to stay in touch. Aaron will be presenting on behalf of Iswap. Aaron? Hi, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, hi, everyone. My name is Karen, and I'm CEO and founder of Iswap. So, uh, so, have you ever purchased something online and received it late or even the seller requested to cancel your order? And yes, our product mainly solves that problem and the pain for you. I will tell a little bit story about one of uh, my friends who was having a such problem and uh, we tried to help him. That's why the product is available now. My friend was selling online his products in eBay, in Amazon, in Shopify, and in a little uh, different other channels. And uh, he was having some problems. Uh, one of the main problems he was facing was he was selling more than I have. Uh, the management of orders and inventory was taking a lot of time. He was processing some orders late because uh, because of lacking stock and uh, he was getting different reports from different platforms and it was very hard to connect them together and understand how his business is performing. And that's why he was getting bad reviews and losing his business. So uh, what we have uh, decided, we have developed the problem uh, all in one uh, dashboard, which is solving all this uh, for our clients and it's helping to have right quantities in different channels at the same time and helping to pre-order required products in time as well improving the customer experience and feedbacks uh, by bringing extra revenue for their business with it doing authentic repricing in amazon in other marketplaces uh, that's why uh, we're helping peter's business unstoppable so here's our product and it's live and we have some advantages like uh, we are giving price and stock predictions and as well we have automation module which is saving a lot of time for our retailers. And uh, currently we have already developed Android and iOS applications and launching this month as well. We have added B2B e-commerce for wholesalers which is giving extra market for our uh, customers internally. So we have launched uh, last year and uh, currently we have paying customers. We have about 250 companies, businesses trying our software. We have converted about 60 of them. So our conversion rate is high. And uh, our target market currently is uh, only uh, in California and in a few fields like in furniture, in apparel and in electronics. For example, in furniture field, we have uh, 
17,000 sellers, which can be our potential customers because we have all the integrations with furniture sellers, marketplaces like Wayfair, Amazon, and so on. And our go to market strategy is based on mainly affiliate marketing and as well SEO, which is uh, working very good in our case. Uh, our business model is very simple. We have a free plan as well, and uh, none of our competitors is offering that as well. Uh, well, it's starting, our paying uh, plan is starting from uh, $99 per month, and it's limited by number of orders and integrations. So we have few competitors, uh, and uh, the main advantage we are offering is our powerful software, which is allowing to uh, give more with less price in a package. And uh, that's why we don't have limits uh, on a lot of things and we have more features and it's uh, also helping us to keep our price lower. Uh, so uh, we have some other advantages like innovation in pricing. We are helping to find the best price in the market and ultimately reprice the uh, product price, uh, for example, in Amazon and Walmart, which is bringing extra revenue for our customers. So it's our team. We are certain people in our team and working together all of these three years on this product and uh, it's already alive. Uh, we are trying to raise our first money but up till now we are a bootstrapped company and now we are trying to raise uh, our one, two millions for the seed round and uh, we are going to spend mainly on marketing and our engineering team. So thank you very much. Here are my contacts and looking forward to answering your questions. Thanks a lot, Garen. Uh, questions? Okay, yes, let's clear, yeah. <laughs> let's confuse everyone and introduce the next Garen, uh, Garen Hachikian from Expert Technologies. Hi, everybody. Hi, Garen. Just let me share my screen. Cool. Just a second. Great. So my name is Colin. I'm the founder and CEO of Expert Technology. And in Expert, we're creating the future that cares. Healthcare delivery costs are huge. Only USA spends $3.6 trillion, $3 trillion on healthcare delivery. And caregiving alone takes $1.2 trillion across the segments of elderly care, children's support, individuals with disabilities, and nursing from which 52% is being spent on non-primary activities, such as patient interaction and psychological comfort, bedside support, and medication adherence activities. The industry is facing a significant problem now. There is a huge shortage of caregivers. This year, we already have a gap of 1.2 million caregivers in the industry. And if the same dynamic continues, in seven years, the situation will be even worse, becoming almost seven, eight million. We have the solution. Let me introduce Robin, the autonomous care extender. The use of Robin results in better health outcomes, enhanced patient experience, and improved physician satisfaction. We conducted study, studies in Wigmore Clinic at North Marash Medical Center, and we use widely known and uh, validated instruments to measure effectiveness of Robin. And studies show that Robin increases the level of joyfulness of children by 33% reducing time of medical procedures by, the, by up to 40% and increases satisfaction by 14.4%. The technology behind Robin combines conversational AI, robotics, and patient monitoring system. Robin proactively engages with patients and provides companionship. Uh, in addition, Robin helps medical staff on day-to-day -day monitoring. It collects critical patient data and provides reports. We provide this in all-in-one suppression model, where hardware and software included, and we typically bill for one-year contract. There are several competitors in the market, but Robin, in contrast to the others, has a broad set of functionalities, which make it a comprehensive tool for a medical staff. So far, we deployed already seven robots. Uh, we started the pilot with UCLA Mattel Children's Hospital, 
and we're negotiating for another, another pilot with CHLA with overall upselling opportunity of 450 robots. And in February, we'll reach 11K MRR. Robin is getting also huge media attention and already has been featured over 200 media outlets. Our team combines strong technical expertise uh, in robotics, AI, and machine learning. In addition to technical capacity, our team consists of clinical psychologists, occupational therapists with the highest academic credentials from leading universities. We're raising a 2.5 million seed round to reach 200K MRR, build the next generation of Robin, and bring technology to the level to be ready for volume sales. And over the next five years, we expect Robin to be deployed in different market segments. At the same time, we're going to evolve Robin functionality much further making it fully autonomous and supporting physical caregiving. Let's shape the future that cares. Thank you very much. Hey, Any Karen. questions? Yeah, Karen, this is Michelle. Um, I'm involved in a lot of AI um, projects before. So my question is, um, who are you gonna sell it to and uh, how are you gonna make your first a thousand sales. Mm -hmm. So uh, currently we're targeting uh, pediatric dental clinics and pediatric outpatient clinics. And also we are working with bigger players like UCLA and CHLA. And of course the sales cycles are much longer with the big hospitals, but we're already starting the process and selling to the small ones because uh, compared with the hospital sales cycles much long, uh, like sh shorter. And uh, only, only in California, there are over 1,000 pediatric clinics and over 2,000 pediatric dental clinics. So for this upcoming year, we are targeting those. Thank you. Thank Perfect. You. A lot, Gary, very exciting presentation. And let's move yeah. on to uh, Forge Fiction and Paraj will be presenting there. Okay, Paraj? Hey, hello everyone. Hello. Um, so I'm Haraj, uh, co-founder of Forge Fiction, uh, the platform that changes the way stories are written. Uh, many of you might have noticed that uh, in recent years, um, the standard moves from movies to TV series, uh, gaining more and more popularity. And the main reason for this is that uh, TV series provide much more immersion for the viewers, allowing to connect with the characters and the world of the story. Uh, a similar shift to this has to happen to the book format of storytelling. Um, on the other hand, there is an ongoing war between streaming services like Netflix and other players, uh, which forces them to look for new and scalable sources of uh, content online. Uh, our platform changes the way the stories are written uh, and consumed, uh, bringing it closer to the TV series format with bite-sized content completed with uh, visual fictional worlds uh, that uh, improve the experience for the readers and also uh, market validated content during its writing for the future media adaptations. The writing on, of content uh, on Forge Fiction happens in collaboration between talented authors and uh, world building community that assists them in creating the fictional world of their story, like uh, of their stories like characters, maps and things like this. Uh, the content is then monetized during its writing uh, in a subscription model serving, uh, serving as a great alternative for writers to the traditional publishing. And in fact, recent years show that uh, subscription based uh, content sales uh, have monetary advantage over traditional publishing as well. While we start with the subscription model on our platform, we also plan to later include media uh, company partnerships to the monetization in the format of licensing the content to them. Uh, it's not a surprise that the storytelling industry itself is huge. Uh, the genres that we target, like sci-fi, fantasy, and similar ones, uh, amount to $28 billion annually. Uh, we start with the subscription-based story sales, which is um, half a billion plus uh, total industry with 25% um, annual growth. 
Of course, there are other competitors in this market, some of them like Wattpad operate in more traditional uh, book formats, while others like Matefire bring in new concepts to storytelling itself. Um, we bring in a new format of stories where uh, stories themselves, the text for, uh, format is uh, completed with visual universes, which uh, allow for better immersive experience for the readers. Uh, and from the writer's perspective, uh, we are giving the tools for them to create those universes and also give um, assisting community, world building community to help them in this process. In addition, we also take care of the marketing of the stories, which makes us a great al alternative to self-publishing as well, self-publishing on Amazon. Uh, we, our community already published three um, full-length full novels um, using Forge, Forge Fiction uh, with a total of 90 co-authors. Uh, there were 600 plus copies sold with a total of $5,000 dollars paid by the readers and the community itself is uh, already uh, 1500 weekly active creators uh, growing 20 percent per month our co-founding team consists of four close friends with uh, experience spanning from science to software engineering and digital marketing but one thing that united our friendship long before starting for fiction was the passion for sci-fi and fantasy worlds uh, which makes us sort of part of the communities that we target, which allows us to really understand the needs and potential that they have. We're cu currently raising uh, 150K uh, pre-seed round, which will allow us to reach 10K MRR and start media partnerships within this year. And changing something as all this storytelling isn't easy, but it's exciting. And it will be our pleasure if you join us in this journey. Thank you. Quick question here, when you have so many uh, people helping in the creation of a, of a work, how do you uh, handle the copyright? Yeah, okay, so um, uh, if the, uh, uh, here we sh should distinguish what story is and what the universe of it is. Uh, the universe is like the characters and maps and all the assets that are not included in the text format and the story itself is just the chapters that people read so we have uh, like main writers who write this text part and uh, assisting community that helps in uh, world building so the copyrights for the text part uh, so the more traditional looking part with chapters belongs to the writers because they create it but if they uh, create the world itself uh, via our community then the copyright uh, of this part belongs to uh, to our platform uh, this is for two reasons uh, firstly uh, because we are not just limiting ourselves with monetizing the chapters but also we are planning to partner with media industry and also to uh, be able to share some of the small amount of the revenue from this monetization between the people the community that helped them in creating this source Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Uh, up next, we will have Nick from Gebeser present. Hello, everyone. Can everyone see this? Yes. OK, brilliant. Um, we are GBCERT. Uh, we are patent pending uh, blockchain and microchip cross functional uh, solution. Basically, what it was is about four years ago, Friends of ours, which are doctors, actually went for a celebration with their, their doctor friends. 14 of them ended up in hospital and four of them died from fake alcohol. Um, after visiting my friend in hospital and uh, talking about this problem, we decided to actually investigate and see whether we could find a solution because we were in the uh, blockchain space. Uh, and basically what we wanted to do is we wanted to find a, a way of actually doing a distance E -valid, uh, validation system. So what we came up with or, or the research that we found is at the moment uh, there's about 1.4 trillion dollars worth of counterfeit products in the world and then over the next 10 years that will be uh, doubled to 2.8 trillion. The areas that are concerned are of course the retail space and the, the, the manufacturing market. Also um, asset basically the supply chain side of things and also a big problem when it comes to uh, certification. 
So basically, um, when it comes to brands, they're losing revenue and their products are un unprotected. When it comes to logistics, around about 10 to 40 percent of all assets actually vanish along the supply chain. So the idea is to basically find a solution. So what we did was we combined two different types of technology. We can't combine what we call a microchip uh, HF technology uh, with the blockchain te technology for the supply chain side of things. Now, the, here we have three different types of solution that we're working with. One is basically uh, what we call uh, the embedded chip within the product, which is A. The second one is replacing an, exist an existing label with our technology. As you can see here, it's actually in the wash label. And third is where we can actually do a bespoke design chip based around the actual logo of the, the brand itself. Here's a company that we're working with. They've actually embedded the chip into the international uh, guarantee card. Now, what happens is when they scan that chip, uh, it verifies that that product is real, but not just that, it actually changes the encryption. So every time that, that product gets scanned, the encryption changes. So it's never the same password. Here's another example. As you can see here, this is a, a demo for Tommy Hill figure, and you can actually see the chip there. And this is a more visible chip, uh, like an anti-counterfeit deterrent, where you can actually see that and scan that chip there. Because we're a, what we call a, a one-stop shop, we'll actually basically help the companies uh, with their own um how do you say application if they need it or we can provide them with an a api to actually link to their existing app now the difference between us and other technologies is as i suppose there's two main things is the supply chain and big data with our type of technology because we can actually collect data from um how do you say assembly all the way through to the the retailer and then to the end user all that data can actually be used then for analytics uh, which basically is very important for brands now. With other technologies like holograms, QR codes and barcodes, that, that's quite limited. And also they can actually be copied quite easily. So this is basically uh, the, the competitive landscape. Of course, it started with the tag in most brands. And then what we had was the uh, QR code and the barcode. Problem with these, these are two dimensional uh, uh, solutions. So therefore it's very easily copied. Then came what the hologram, and then what happened was the RFID with the, the, the product solution companies came on board. And then we had stuff like um, Invisible Ink, uh, which doesn't actually help the end user, but helps the actual company itself. And then there was us, which we're trying to provide a solution for both the company itself and the end user for verification. So these are the different types of solutions by uh, using our company or the benefits is increased product value because that, that product, when it goes into the market, can be trusted that it's a genuine product. Because we're using the blockchain, everything else is secure. Of course, the tracking of products along the supply chain. Uh, also, the connection between you, uh, the company and the end user, all that data can be used for analytics. Uh, the create loyalty programs, stock counterfeits, the logistic solution, theft prevention, like uh, Rolex watches in the second hand market, and also uh, track parallel trading. Now, because of what, all what we can provide, it not just uh, becomes just the brands itself. We're also working with companies in the auto uh, or the auto part industry, uh, medical field, and even COVID-19. So this is the type of data that we can collect. This is an example. Uh, this is our CEO, so like in the US. He actually scanned something in June for the 15th at 7 a.m. in the morning when he was driving to work, which he shouldn't be really scanning on the highway. But um, it, it can pick the actual where he was, uh, the time and date, what uh, device he used, his email, and what product he was scanning. So this is our SaaS model. Basically, yeah, we, we have two components to ours. We charge a, a monthly fee for the actual data side of things. And also we charge a, a chip fee as well. So we, we actually can profit off two sides of our business. This is uh, what we've completed so far. We've actually got uh, five clients now. Um, and we've spent uh, 300,000 developing the product and actually having the pat uh, patents uh, pending in the US and Europe. And we also 
establishing one in China at the moment. Uh, our goal over the next 12 months is we want to hit $13 million worth of revenue with 10 contracts and have $60 million uh, uh, of revenue in the pipeline. We want to add two more patents uh, and also integrate POS systems and security systems in retail shops. So what, um, and then over the next four years, our goal is to increase that to, to 90 million uh, with the contracts of uh, 30 to 40 uh, customers or, or businesses. These are the clients that we're working with at the moment. And this is our big one that we're actually talking to right now, uh, Scheffler in India. Basically, they have a huge problem with counterfeit products in the auto parts industry. This has basically taken us about uh, one year to actually have the final talks with. Uh, we're covering the products from engine oils, batteries, car parts and bearings. This pilot scheme is estimated to be worth four million just, just in revenue for that. Once we actually completed the pilot scheme, it's estimated then to, in India itself, to be worth 40 million for us. And then if we can get the global, we can actually, it'd be estimated to be worth 124 million for GB cert. Because of what we're doing and we're using a microchip, we've actually basically got a patent, uh, sorry, we've actually started with um, uh, hospitals. We've got uh, pilot schemes using uh, what we call a COVID-19 card. Um, so basically we're, we're giving 10,000 cards to three, three hospitals and this itself is worth about $250 million worth of revenue for GB Cert. These are some of, the, some of the other companies that we'll be working with. Uh, Johnson & Johnson, GoPro, uh, Men's Warehouse, uh, some of the other ones you might not know because they're from Hong Kong. Maxim, which is Mooncake, and KY, which is Mooncake. Right, our exit strategy, we're working on two different companies. Uh, this is uh, what we call uh, uh, Changeur. They, they actually deal with very high brands like Chanel, Gucci, Hermès. They deal with over 4,000 different brands. Now, they, we know, just this year have actually been given 100 million US dollars to actually invest into companies that solve the sustainability development goals. Uh, we're in talks with them. Uh, they're going to be trying to introduce us into the brands and hopefully in the next five years, this, this could be an acquisition for us. These are the other companies that we're partnering with. It, with Kerry Logistics, they helped us with the, uh, uh, the logistics supply, supply chain side of things. Uh, Wing Tai is basically helping us in China. Henry Shine is another acquisition that we're, we're partnering with because we can see that we, they, they got the potential to actually acquire us in the next four years and Roller Optics. Here's uh, our team. If you can please Sorry. wrap up, yeah, since we... Okay, here's our team. Uh, basically, uh, we're, we're based in the US. Uh, we got Solak and we got Roman. Uh, we've got Sam and myself. And we've got 16 independent agencies worldwide. We've got three full-time developers and three uh, nine project managers. Uh, and this is uh, our uh, advisors. And our ask is we're looking for 500,000 uh, to develop ourselves in the US. Very good. Thank you so much. We appreciate the presentation. Is there any one quick question for Nick? If not, let, let's move on. So then the next speaker will be Mariam. She'll be talking about Lucky Carrot, another very interesting company. Uh, but let me indicate that we do have uh, three additional, um, not additional, but uh, three startups after Mariam to present. So we'll go a little bit uh, beyond our predicted time limit. So just to let you know uh, in advance so that you can uh, plan, hopefully you can plan adjust your time accordingly. Okay. Um, with that, I will be uh, moving on to, to uh, Lucky Carrot. Mariam? Hello. I... I uh, hope everything is fine with the voice and yes, it's very good. So you can hear it clearly. Just yes, second. we hear you. Okay, now it should be fine. I'm ready to start. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sure that most of you know the 80-20 rule according to which 80% of the outcomes come from 20% of the causes. Well, this is also true in business. Specifically, very little number of your employees are behind the majority of the business outcomes, let it be customer satisfaction, company profitability, innovation, and so on. Why is that? Well, because those employees, those few employees are engaged, uh, which means they are always eager to go the extra mile and to do more for your company. But what if I say you can double the number of your engaged employees? I'm Mariam and I'm introducing Lucky Carrot. First of all, Lucky Carrot measures your, your company's employee engagement score and finds out any disengagement causes. It turns out that among many reasons for employee disengagement, there are top two reasons. One is lack of recognition and feeling undervalued, and the other one is lack of growth. That's why Lucky Carrot provides an opportunity for peer-to-peer -peer recognition where employees appreciate each other for a daily great job and achievements by sending virtual carrots. Later, uh, later employees exchange their collected carrots into experiences, uh, gift cards as short-term rewards. Based on recognitions, Lucky Carrot provides you with a visibility into real-time employee uh, interactions and relationships to see the positive dynamics and be proactive for any negative uh, dynamics within the teams and predict possible turnovers in advance. Well, what else can you do with Lucky Carrot information? You can now detect the key decision makers, informal leaders, key team players and best executors inside your company. Operating in a SaaS model, we charge two and a half dollars per employee per month. After having enough user base, we're planning to charge the uh, commissions from the gift card providers and a new pricing package is on the way. We have 27 paying clients now and a month's engagement report, localized gift cards and actionable recommendations supporting HR managers in increasing engagement. Our target markets for the next two years are UA and Baltics, and for our growth, we do direct sales in partnership with HR companies, planning now on inbound marketing and inbound sales. In our team, we have more than 30 years of product and full stack development, entrepreneurial and business experience. Thank you so much, Mariam. If there's a question, please jump in. Otherwise, we can uh, quickly move on to the next one. Great, so let's have Vlad from PAVA. Hello everyone, let me share my screen. Can you see it? Yes, we can, yes. Hello again, uh, my name is Vlad. Uh, I'm the CEO of PAVA. It's an, it's an integrated payment and expense management solution for companies. Business travel market reached out $1.45 trillion with 5% annual growth. Targeting companies in the US that has domestic and logistic expenses. And they are making $30 billion transaction per year. Additionally, AI is coming, cashless transactions are growing. That's why we believe that there is a great opportunity in this market. But to cover all of these expense needs, companies need to have these stovepipes, banking systems, corporate credit cards, and expense management tools, which makes them problem. It's a fraud, cost of the tools, and cost of the times. For example, their employees make mistakes. They lose receipts. Uh, they don't uh, read financial policies. They even try to submit fraud on top of these forms. It, uh, it's accumulated all of the necessary functions into one unique AI-based integrated payment and expense management solution. As we get access to all of these top pipes, we can give a transparency across all of them. We give AI-based analytics, financial control, and we reduce the uh, expense management cost. To understand how Payva works, just imagine Uber application, but instead of connecting users with drivers, we connect companies with merchants, and there is no any need to fill up all of these expense reports because everything is already automatic uh, generated in our platform. We have indirect competitors, such as expense management tools or banking systems, but Payva is a unified platform for all of them. All of these tools can be just plugged in into Payva to cover corporate expense need. We have simple business model, transaction fee and subscription fee. According to this business model and uh, our 
target market. We are estimating to have $23 million revenue at the end of the 2025. Currently, we are already executing in Armenia. We, have, we are generating revenue and we have 25 paid uh, companies. We are going to establish company in the US, get the partnership with the US bank, integrate with the post systems and participate in the forums where we can generate leads. And here's my contact. What is your status on the bank that you're talking with? Yeah, uh, currently we are uh, preparing the package for uh, to apply for the bank. Uh, and we have uh, in our advisor board, a uh, member from the Bank of America. Well, with help of him, we can uh, get the partnership with the Bank of America. Okay, thank you. Is a 2% transaction fee on top of uh, the transaction fee already charged by the banks? Uh, no, uh, as we are a payment uh, system, uh, we, uh, we are uh, doing the same way as other payment system. Generally, currently Visa and MasterCard are charging about 2% about from the merchant. And we are going to be uh, there uh, with, within them, with, with them. So the two percent uh, are the similar type of the uh, charging process. Hey, uh, yeah. Hey, this is uh, this is Michelle. Um, you know, since I was at PayPal for like six years, um, I'm just wondering um, if you guys are planning to get your licenses and stuff, compliance yeah. and licenses. Uh, uh, we uh, we are uh, uh, there. We are negotiating with um, uh, with the legal perspective, and there is a legal contract uh, where we can partnership with the bank without any kind of licensing. So, licensing part will be, will be go uh, beyond the banking system. For okay. example, got it, got it, got it. I think you guys are doing bank as a service, so you're partnering with the bank, and they have all the licenses. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thanks. Perfect. Thank very good, Vlad. That was very interesting as well. So we're moving on. Our, uh, we have two more presentations. Alexander with the retention force. Alexander, please do share your screen. Thank you. Um. Yeah, I was on mute. Uh, full screen, if you don't uh, mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I suppose everyone can see my screen now. Uh, I'm Alexander from Retention Force, and uh, and in Retention Force, uh, Retention Force is an all-in-one marketing and customer care platform for small businesses. Four years ago, with my wife, we started Build Salon Business, and soon we realized that it's really hard to grow the business and make it profitable. So. Uh, small businesses, and this is universal, face uh, following challenges. First of all, it's high churn rate. Then you don't have resources or money to uh, have dedicated marketing specialists that will uh, help you grow your business. Uh, you end up using six, four to six automation tools uh, that are not really integrated with each other, and it's uh, really hard to do that. And with all of this, uh, you have to compete with uh, nationwide chains and uh, uh, franchises. So we start looking what they are doing and trying to replicate it in our system. And as an engineer, I created a system that eventually helped us to double our salon revenue in a year and become profitable. And this was the beginning of Retention Force. So now Retention, telling, so now retention Force is an uh, all-in-one marketing platform that includes all Works now because we, uh, instead of uh, focusing on uh, communication uh, using email and SMS, we used chatbots uh, and we created uh, tools around conversation with customers. Uh, this uh, created a unique product in, in the market. So, the product itself consists of two main parts it's a web based, dash, uh, cloud based dashboard, and the white labeled chatbot that faces consumers. And the business model is based on uh, software as a service. We have a free tire uh, with uh, up to 50 monthly checkouts. And uh, our paid plans start with uh, $20 for 100 checkouts and, and so on. And we also have some premium add-ons that uh, subscribers, uh, customers can subscribe to. 
Our go-to-market uh, strategy is based on product-led growth with partnerships and integrations with major point of sale, e-commerce and appointment software providers. And the, we want to approach the market one platform at a time and one industry at a time. Uh, the competition is quite diverse. On the left side, those are tools that uh, use traditional means of communication like email and SMS. Uh, and on the right side, those are tools that enable uh, to create a conversational experience with your consumers. So Retention Force combines all in one marketing platform and uses con conversational technologies in one solution. And this allows us to achieve high conversion rates, uh, frictionless experience for uh, consumers because you don't have to download an additional app. You already have the messaging apps we, uh, to interact with the business. Uh, it creates interactive and engaging experience with consumers and we provide all required templates to get the business to get started uh, quickly. Uh, <clears throat> um, um, while we don't really have right now integrations with these platforms that I mentioned, we already have some revenue, uh, we're generating some revenue and we, create, uh, we did an experimental integration with one of the uh, appointment uh, uh, software providers. Uh, a couple months ago and just using simple email uh, marketing uh, approach, we were able to uh, get 100 signups from 2000 leads of this uh, software solution. Um, and this actually proves that our go-to-market strategy is valid. In, and we want to push forward using, uh, creating more integrations with uh, these platforms. The team behind Retention Force, I believe, is has all required skills and experience to solve uh, this problem and push Retention Force uh, forward uh, because of our experience in software engineering and entrepreneurship and marketing. And uh, I also personally co-founded four other companies before Retention Force. And we also are uh, proud to have two strategic uh, advisors on board. Previously, uh, our early investors are uh, Index Ventures and Hive Ventures, and right now we're raising uh, 250K for our pre seed round for 18 months that will allow us to reach 50,000 uh, monthly revenue. Thank you. Perfect, Alat. Okay. So, hi, I'm Ala, I'm the co-founder of URA, and today I'm going to tell you how we are going to enable consumers to make smarter online purchases. Oops. Okay. So there are 7 million online retailers in the world and they have one common pain. They lose their business to big retail sharks. Amazon and Walmart use dynamic pricing uh, to acquire customers and these um, algorithms are difficult to compete with. So uh, the small retailers have do two challenges. First, how to define the best price. And secondly, how to acquire customers at lower cost. So how our solution solves this problem? We help retailers to sell more by pleasing the need of the buyers who always want to pay less and get the product right now. So uh, let's imagine Emily dreams of Nike sneakers. She wants them right now. She cannot afford them at the regular price. What can she do? She can put her price on our platform and our retailer specific algorithm will approve the deal in the pre-defined range. By the way, this problem is common to 25% of buyers according to Forbes. They don't want to pay wait and they don't want to pay the regular price. So price it, buy it. Isn't that what every buyer is looking for? Yeah! What you heard right now is the notification that comes on Emily's phone. And uh, this notification comes when the deal is approved. This is very catchy. This creates a word of mouth. And this is our formula for organic growth. And URA means an exclamation like hooray. So our revenue comes from 5% of um, commission on successful deals. And in the future, we will also have additional monetization sources such as targeted ads and data analytics. Our go-to-market strategy is as exciting as our product itself. This is a web extension that grasps the customers from Amazon and others, beats the price and redirects to our app for a checkout. 
our competition, uh, these are the platforms that help the retailers to define the best price um, at the fixed cost. Uh, and uh, for the customer acquisition, uh, these are PPC ads, which are costly. What makes us unique is that we create a new market that was not available to these small retailers before, and we charge a success before that, no fixed costs. The lessons learned. Uh, in September, we had a fantastic result in Armenia. We had a pre-launch for 15 days and we had around 6,000 downloads uh, out of which 1,400 uh, price offers, which means that uh, the product is really beloved by the users. The TAM for US market that we predict is 350 million US. So we have, as of now, successfully closed the uh, pre-seed round, sorry, and now the investment that uh, is needed is 500K, of which 300K is already committed by the anchor investor. And um, these are the predicted revenues for uh, the upcoming years. Uh, we plan to break even in the second year of um, round A, and after which this will follow by the exponential growth. We think and we are sure that the right time is now because COVID-19 has accelerated the expansion of e-commerce towards new businesses, new customers, and new product types. Thank you very much, and I will be happy to hear your questions. Okay, questions to Ayla. I have a question. Um, so my name is Michelle. I, my question is, how are you attracting the two-sided market? How we are attracting, sorry, what? The two-sided market, the users and the, I mean, the, on, the online retail. Yeah, the, the yeah my, sure. So basically, um, let's start from the stores that we are onboarding. Uh, this is uh, direct sales. We work with them directly. Uh, so, so far, uh, the pre-launch was in Armenia. We haven't started in the US market. We are now pre-listing the, the, the stores that we will contact uh, on the first place. But how we did it in Armenia, uh, basically, there is no reason why the store would not agree to join us. Because first of all, we are charging a success fee and then secondly this is a no hustle service uh, they just give us access to their website uh, and our algorithm uh, just grasps the information from their online store so they don't need to do any manual work and that is also based on the learning that we had from the pre-launch because we had some manual work and we are currently excluding that so the stores are quite happy to cooperate with us. No hustle and only success fee. And on the second part, we have uh, the users that we have to attract. Here in Armenia, we used uh, PPC ads and we were very, very successful with the PPC ads. We got 0 0.32 uh, US dollar, like 32 cents acquisition cost per user. Which is an amazing result. And uh, secondly, we used celebrity marketing. So for US, we think this will be the same, but definitely different celebrities and different uh, acquisition costs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm um, just wondering, because I um, used to work at eBay and you know, it's always interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to, to, to make two points. One, regarding the investors. I'd like to thank all 16 representatives of the investment community who were with us today, with their questions, with their interaction and, and the upcoming follow-ups. Uh, we will be sending you a follow-up email, all of you, uh, including the profiles of the 14 companies that you heard about today, as well as the recording of this session, okay? So it will allow you to, to continue communicating with them as necessary. My second point is that we'll be continuing with our accelerator program in terms of the distinguished executive dialogues. We started the series back in fall. We had three episodes, unfortunately, stopped during the war period. Now we're doing uh, back again. So the next one will be uh, on February 2nd, as you see here, Sharik Rizvi will be the speaker. You will have dialogue with him. He is the vice president of monetization at Reddit. Okay, 
And the following week, on the 9th of uh, February, we'll have the following next session, will be done by Rafiq Makki, who is the head of technology at the investment firm called Mubadala. Many of you know Mubadala, so he will be with us again to, to cover um, a very interesting topic and have dialogue with you. So I look forward to, 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 to see you all in those sessions. Again, in closing, I'd like to thank the Ministry of High Tech Industry, uh, you for, for, for this session. Uh, our thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zorian, and thank you to all participants. Uh, thanks, Victoria, for being with us. Victoria is Bogosian, is the Deputy Minister. Uh, we'll be able to... Uh, Victoria, do you want to say something or...? Just shortly, I would like to thank you to everyone for the nice speeches to all participants and thank you to all the investors to join us for this time. So let's good luck to all of our participants. And thank you very much, Mr. Zarian, for the great job. Thank you. <laughs> our, our pleasure. It's, it's a joint effort. Uh, and I thank everybody who participated from the, the companies, the startups, the investment community, the mentors, as well as both organizations, HBU and the ministry. Thanks again. Have a nice evening. Nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Take care.